you probably know 3D printing plays a role in just about every project that I produce on my channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the longer LK3 Pro. Looks like an Ender 3 Max. Stick around. So let's dive right in. I've got a few printers in the shop that are FDM or resin based printing and I use them for different purposes in my project builds. So why am I looking at a new printer? I've already got one that I've been upgrading for years. Well it's actually going on about 10 years that I've had my Taz 4 Pro that I've upgraded with bed leveling and all those automated features, cameras and fun stuff and it produces print qualities that are fine. Uh, in most cases they, they'll never see the light of the world because they're uh, sub-assemblies within my CNC routed um, external parts. Um, but that said, I'm always looking for something with a bigger build volume, better quality, rigid gantry, and this may be it. So um, I'm, I'm not going to pass it up. So when they offered to send me this printer, I thought I'd give it a shot, run through the specs and see how it performed. In this video, we'll be looking at that. Like I said before, it's the LK5 Pro. It builds upon the LK4 predecessor. So let's just dive in. All right, so let's get this box open. So parts are pretty organized inside the box. Um, you see the build plate there. And the gantry is mostly uh, already assembled, pre-assembled. I'd say it's close to 80 to 90% assembled. So I set that aside. Let's get this box out of the way because it's taking up more space than we need. The Y-axis and X-axis are pre-assembled. Everything's already wired to the main controller and the power supply is all set up. It's just a matter of putting the X-axis on the Z gantry. Once you figure out that orientation, which the documentation was a little confusing, it's able to just be assembled straight onto the, the base. So here I'm assembling the Z lead screw as well as the coupler and the stepper motor on that Z axis. And then you just flip it on the side. There's a couple screws that go up in that extrusion really pretty straightforward. I think the more important aspect is now that we have the gantry, we've got to put these supporting rods. These supporting rods, um, as you can imagine, on this Z, this type of a gantry, the, the taller it gets, the more potential for it to be off square from the build plate. So these rods here, um, these extruded rods with adjustable ends, get attached to the base. And you can see that blue square there I use on both sides to make sure that it's 90 degrees uh, parallel or perpendicular to the base and I think that's important um, I was just anticipating that as being a potential problem area and uh, they don't really mention that in the the assembly instructions but I felt like that's that's pretty critical as your Z axis moves up and down you're gonna want it to be uh, parallel to your build plate now uh, here we're just doing some final assembly putting the spool holder on the back mounting the LCD display, which is a 4.3 display touchscreen, which is pretty nice. Uh, the build quality of this uh, printer is, is pretty nice in that it's all metal, it feels solid. Here I'm mounting the Z axis limit switch. And then connecting all of the stepper motors and limit switches up is really easy. There's these little uh, tags on each of the wires that tell you X, Y, Z, E, so on and so forth. And the last critical part is to flip the switch here between 220 and 110. Um, and then of course I needed to clean off that excess glue from the sticker. With that we've powered up and then we can start looking at things. We've got the glass bed there and with the standard uh, clips that hold it on. The, the glass bed seemed to be pretty flat. I didn't get a chance to really measure that. Uh, immediately checking the z-axis we see that some adjustments are necessary to level that bed and so in doing that there's a section here on the screen you can see the five points that you level it. Uh, you just select your point it navigates to that and then you can adjust these screws underneath the bed to raise or lower the bed. Really easy access piece of cake you just continue to press the different points and I was doing the four corners in a counterclockwise orientation and then measuring the center. I ended up going through two cycles of this to level the bed and then once it was set up and the bed was level at all five points um, it really held it pretty, pretty well. 
grabbing some filament and loading that up in the extruder the hot end heated up pretty quick in it but it was pretty slow to pull that filament into the hot end the hot end you can see it's all metal enclosure it's got a 3d printed fan shroud um, it's got that high temp uh, filament tube there going to the Bowden extruder that you see in the back there your filament just comes in and it looks like there's there's a potential for drag uh, because of the angle but it seemed to work out pretty good and these are the tags I mentioned so you got your X Y Z extruder so it's pretty hard to mess up how these get connected over at the LCD screen so you've got the basic navigation functions you can move the gantry X, Y, Z, and you can even extrude filament. Next, the file area. There were no files on this card, so you can see it's just a bunch of empty folders. Tuning, you have the flexibility to adjust the how quick the gantry moves, um, what the extrusion percentage is, what the speed percentage is. You can override those. As well as there's default settings for PLA, ABS, and all that fun stuff. Bed leveling we already covered. And information is going to tell you all the firmware versions and hardware versions of the devices that you have as part of this printer. In the latest version of Cure, I load up some test models, throw those on the build plate, and here we're doing uh, Tim's test train. A bunch of different models that um, characterize the print performance and functionality of all sorts of different aspects, and we'll go through those in detail. So slicing it took a bunch of time because there's a lot of detail. Just using the default settings for the longer LK5 Pro. It's a 0.2 layer height. You can see the slicing here. Didn't use any supports. Well, actually, I, I used some supports, but build plate only. And then took it over on the micro SD card and printed out on the longer LK5. Took a while, and this is only a partial time lapse of that as I was running around doing a bunch of work in the shop. So as I printed, um, the glass bed is it's got a texture to it which feels almost like blue tape which is kind of nice and it really seemed to adhere to it really well. I would say the only issue that I had here is that Cura um, by default over extrudes on the first layer. I think that's uh, an advanced parameter that can be changed but that was causing some of the first layer um, dimensions and accuracy to be off a little bit because it was over extruding to ensure that we got a really great um, bed adhesion which is not a problem from what I what I found printing out the items that I did on this machine all in all good performance looking at the end results you can see all these train objects and their wheels pop those off the bed assembled them and then put them here for your viewing pleasure. That's a train um, which demonstrates all of the undercuts, the layer lines, any ringing. There was a little little bit no support there um, so we did have a couple strings fall. No support there or there um, which reasonably well performance. This thing looked great. I mean there were no issues really just really minor. Here is a an overhang test model and you can see the how clean all of these edges are there's just one or two strands of filament that didn't adhere there that could be related to cooling um, other than that the edges and the these are 45 degree angles all printed like super clean on the next model or train car is this retraction model which will generally determine whether or not you're gonna have stringing um, and there was not one string to be found here it just printed great exactly how it should this overhang uh, ranged from what 40 to 70 40 50 70 and the only one that really had problems with it but 65 70 that area you can see that there's some loose but it wasn't nearly as bad as what I've seen on other printers um, there's a little ringing you can see that effect in the sidewall there which um, may indicate that there's some issues with the gantry here you see the same ringing this is a tolerance model 0.2 3 4 and 5 millimeter tolerance 
and these pegs um, all wiggle a little bit to determine how tight that tolerance is. Now they weren't free and clear because of that previous issue I mentioned where the first layer had adhered them all. And the caboose looked uh, pretty stunning. Aside from that one or two strings there, no supports, um, but these little door handles are just surprisingly intact and the, the level of detail and quality there was just exceptional. With Again, with just those minor threads hanging down and there's even an air gap under there. It was surprisingly, you could see through it. Um, so these models are just a great way to test out uh, the calibration of the printer. In addition to that, I did a whistle and a bass. And overall, you see the, the general structure of the, the machine. It's pretty solid. It looks great. Functionality is good. And the results were a, a bit surprising. So that said, in a nutshell, the LK5 Pro isn't a bad machine. It's got pretty good print quality. The only thing it's really missing is a heated enclosure. Uh, and for me, that's kind of a problem. Uh, with ABS warpage and those sort of fluctuation in the room temperature, that's going to cause problems for the larger printed parts that I need to produce. As well as the low temperature on the hot end uh, and the Bowden extruder. I won't be able to print semi-flexible materials like TPUs, which may be an issue. If it's not an issue for you, then this is a pretty good printer. It's pretty rigid gantry, pretty fast and clean print results. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell. It'll keep you updated on future videos. If you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up. Just giving you a quick overview on the LK5. It supports this channel. In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too.